Hello everyone, welcome to the next installment of the Psychotic Break build video series. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the body design. So in the previous videos, we've been kind of talking about the frame itself. We've been going over like the weapon assembly. Now you can see that there is actually a body in the back of it. And um, the body is kind of interesting for Psychotic Break because ultimately it is a self-contained robot that is just kind of sandwiched in between the frame. So let me um, get this over to the workbench, kind of take it apart and show you the new internal body of Psychotic Break. So here is Psychotic Break in its current form right now. Looks you know pretty similar to previous, except for that actually has wheels and it has this nice little body around the back. Now, before I get too far into this, I wanna make a note. A lot of this is very much still prototype. Some people might look at these little dinky wheels and be like, why are you using those wheels? Well, I couldn't get the bigger ones yet. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm still testing and still prototyping. So if you haven't seen me make a video on this and you haven't seen me make a final decision, which I haven't made a final decision on pretty much anything yet, then there's probably still some iteration and some changes left to come. And this body is definitely very much like that. There's a lot of changes that still need to be made with this body. The proof of concept is all I'm really testing right here. The proof of concept is, can I have a you know somewhat floating body inside the frame? So that's really ultimately what I'm trying to test here. So um, let me take off these top screws and kind of show you what this um, delicious little robot sandwich looks like. The top of the frame is held on just by these five screws that may or may not change, we'll see. Um, but the front one is for the weapon and then the other four are for the body itself. I'm gonna take off the wheels too. So this part is really nothing new. Um, we have the bearing that rides on top of the pulley that goes into the seat of the frame and then everything else is pretty much the same as before. Now here is the body um, and this is once again just a prototype but if you notice there are holes in the body that are for the standoff. So this body actually can just pull straight up and out and the only thing that's not attached to this body is the weapon motor and the weapon motor hub. And if you remember from my previous videos, this actual pulley is gonna be a lot smaller. I just did it like this to keep the um, belt tension the same because these are the only belts that I have on hand right now. So this will actually be a little bit smaller. It's just rubbing a little bit right now. So um, yeah, that's kind of what this looks like. Let's um, lift up this top section of the body and show you what's inside. I've zoomed in just a little bit so you can get a better idea what's going on in here. Um, so this just kind of slides up over top of the standoffs. And inside it looks a little something like this. Now this is, um, once again, just a mock-up. This is just kind of to test fit all the parts inside. Um, I've got my brushless motors here. I still need to design um, the holding method. Right now it's just kind of a half circle, semi-circle, and they just kind of um, squish in there. It's just friction that when the top and bottom are um, compressed down, it just kind of holds the motors in place. This will be very different. I'm gonna do a different method, similar to what I had in Anxiety Attack and a little bit like I had in Long Long Man. The other thing that you might notice is I've got these little posts here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of these posts and these kind of key in and align to the top plate. The top and the bottom plate are actual mirror image of each other. What I wanted to do with this is have the um, top frame and the bottom frame be mirror images. That's why this one has all the bolt hole patterns on it as well as this one. And then I wanted these pieces to be top and bottom mirrored as well so that I really only have to have that many duplicates. I can have a lot less duplicates. I don't have to have unique top and bottom plates or unique top and bottom um, trays, I guess. These are just PLA for right now. These will be nylon G, so you know, don't be too concerned about that. And they're gonna have some other features in them. Uh, but basically we have the battery in the back. Um, I have one of these new Multistar um, BL Heli 32 ESCs. I've been testing that out. That is for an upcoming video. And then of course the brushless drive and I have plenty of space in here. I've got a lot of space up front. I've got a little space over here. I'm still using my little 20 amp Simon K ESCs for the drive. 
And so this is the basic layout. Um, I made this layout so that I could kind of test everything that would go in here. I'm gonna end up starting to shrink this and make it a little bit smaller because I have some of the excess room. I don't like excess room. I wanna make this as tight and compact as I can. You might have also noticed, let me hook this up, that it extends like a little bit, I think it's a quarter inch on the sides here, but the angle's a little tricky with the camera. It actually extends three eighths of an inch past the butt. Um, I thought I'd need a little bit more room for the battery but that ended up not being the case. So I'm gonna kind of compact this all in a little bit. And once I figure out the size of this, this whole thing, once I figure out this size, then I will actually make the frame dependent on that. The two kind of go together. So right now I just have the um, motor sitting in here with this pulley and you can see that I have the um, cutout for the frame just barely clearing the weapon. I like to do that maybe if anything just to kind of show off a little bit, but if this isn't rigid then it's going to come into contact with the body and I'm actually kind of fine with that. Um, so I might add a little bit more space here because this is awfully close, but that's generally kind of the design. Um, I'm using all the available space that I have. Uh, let's see what else to talk about. Um, let me pull this whole thing off and I'll show you. There's um, just a small cutout for the wires for the main weapon here, but I'll show you a little fun trick. So there you go, this body is completely independent of the rest of the frame. There's actually just spacing and gaps here, so nothing touches. Now if I was really fancy, I wanted to make like some contacts or something so that when you slide this body down over top, it just kind of comes into contact with the motor or something like that, but that's just too fancy and not necessary. The reason behind this body is I always like to isolate the drive and isolate as much of the electronics as possible. So if I was to put standoffs in here and just clamp this closed, this body would drive around on its own. It's completely independent of the rest of the system. So the idea was to have this all be nylon G or some kind of nylon based filament and this be its own rigid structure already that houses all the electronics and then it just simply drops into the rest of the frame. So really psychotic break is made up of two different structures. We've got the body structure which is essentially just the drive and the electronics and everything housed inside there and then we have the weapon structure and if we take off the weapon and put that in like that we basically have a structure that is held with the standoffs here, here. The motor is in the middle because it's being held by the bearing on the bottom or on the top. And then it's actually bolted into the frame on the bottom. And then we have the actual shaft up front. So these pieces are going to be aluminum. As I said before, this is going to be aluminum structure up top and bottom. So this is going to be a completely metal structure. And then you basically have the plastic structure that is just kind of slid in the middle, like an interesting little sandwich. So that is kind of the overall body design that I have for Psychotic Break. So what's left to do on this body? Well, there's a few different things that I'd like to accomplish before I start on the final design. So typically what I do is I design something like this that's you know, not terribly pretty, not terribly interesting. It's just a flat pan with some features on it. And this is just to kind of test things out. Ultimately, this was just to test if it fit inside, if everything worked, if the spacing was good, if I had enough room. And I've pretty much accomplished that. So the next step is to figure out what this is actually going to look like. I need to make this as strong as possible. Right now it is um, somewhat flexible because it is just a flat piece and of course it is PLA. Um, so, you know, I need to figure out maybe to add some ribs or add some other structure. Unfortunately, it can't be very thick because this whole thing needs to be sandwiched in between 
these pieces, which are already a quarter inch, they're already relatively thick. So, you know, you have the quarter inch on each side, then you have whatever wall thickness this is, and then you have all the guts. And I'm basically limited by the battery because it is of a certain thickness. I can't really make any of this thicker without just making the whole robot a lot taller. So the next step is to figure out how to get the drive motors properly in here so they don't flop around like they currently do. I don't want to rely simply on friction. I'm basically going to do some sort of wall right here, some sort of lip that clicks them into place here, and then also something over on that side to where they're basically held here and here, and they don't have any way to move this way and this way. I already have this situation because it's sandwiched, so I just need to make sure that it doesn't move this way or that way. Uh, the other thing that I'm sure, you know, this is on the internet, so everyone on the internet is freaking out because I don't have any wheel guards. There will eventually be some sort of wheel guard. It's not going to be what you think, um, but there will be something in the front that at least deflects weapons away from the wheels. I'm really not concerned about this back area because this exists um, and it can flip around pretty quickly, but I'm gonna do some sort of wheel guard just so things don't come into contact from the front and then just start kind of cleaning this up a little bit. The guide pins, come on. The guide pins that I have um, need to be maybe a little bit more strategically located. Um, maybe there's needs to be a couple back here. Um, so that's something that's gonna be done. But basically I'm just gonna go through this in several iterations, get this cleaned up, get this more final the way it's gonna be. And then we can all have the video that we wanna see, which is the top of this and then this thing driving around as its own separate robot because this is completely independent of everything else so i should be able to just drive just this around as its own robot and i want to see that happen probably just as much as you do so i think that's all i wanted to talk about regarding the body of the robot um, upcoming i have another video where i do some esc testing i won't spoil anything but i went from this 60 amp esc down to this little tiny guy. I think it's like a 40 or 50 amp ESC and I got significantly better performance out of it. So I'll be testing these new BL Heli 32-bit ESCs, <clears throat> which so far have been pretty darn nice. They just take a little bit of tweaking. So look for that in an upcoming video. You might see a little bit of a break in the Psychotic Break video series. Just outside, I just got a delivery maybe an hour ago from Avid CNC, formerly CNC router parts. I have a new four foot by four foot CNC that I need to build and install over in that side of the garage. And that machine needs to get built so that I can machine all the top and bottom panels. So there might be a little bit of a break when I get that thing built and set up and then I can finalize some of the builds. So anyway, um, check out the ESC videos coming up, check out the CNC build videos coming up, and as always, check out the links down below, follow me on Facebook, check out the Amazon link if you want to help support my channel. Thanks for watching, see you next time.